Hi guys, so this is another one of my videos. This is about riding in Central and South America and just understanding a few things. I'm sorry if it's a bit echoey, but... Okay, so normally if you're riding in American roads, you know, and, and if you're in Australia and um, wherever else they, they ride on the other side of the road, normally your riding position is probably around about here, you know. Um, it's not, you know, some people say you've got to be here and for safety. My theory is, is if you're alert, you can pretty much, if you're always alert, you can pretty much be anywhere. The only place I wouldn't ride is here on really, uh, um, like slippery roads. Because this is where all the oil and dust and shit that comes out of the buses and trucks and all that sits. But in Central and South America, this is pretty much where you have to ride, and you'll see in a minute why if we get if we if something happened before and, uh, and I wish I had the video on. But because what happens is if you're a lone rider and you're just cruising along and there's another car coming the other way and there's another car behind it, and you're sitting in the middle of your lane or the left of the lane, the car behind it will just overtake and you're the one who has to get out the way. So you've got to stay alert and you basically sit here. Yeah, you know, sit here on the right side. You can, you know, if the truck's going slow enough or the bus going slow enough up a mountain, you can even overtake on the inside. You know, I do that quite a bit. I wouldn't do it anywhere else, but here it's pretty much accepted. You'll see the bike, motorbikers ride in that lane all the time. Um, so, what you'll find is every time you come into a small town you'll get things called topes. They're called different things in different countries, but speed humps basically. Um, and, uh, and, and they, they're all over the place. So you'll get one that's nice and smooth to ride over, the next one you're friggin' jumping out of your bike. Um, so you basically got to approach them, you know, I just get, I get up out of the saddle and just cruise over them in second, you know, at about 20 mile an hour, um, sometimes less, if, if, if they're really rough. Um, and this is the other thing you've got to encounter is, is trucks. They are everywhere. But they're, they're, they're good, you know, like the truckies are always good pretty much wherever you go. Because they're bored on the road, they, they're doing it all the time, and they, they really want to help people, you know. Um, they're pretty safety conscious, you know. Um, they're a lot more safety conscious than, say, that bus up ahead. I, I would never, ever, ever catch a bus after seeing what the way bus drivers drive here and the, li the lives they put at risk. Have a look at this. Uh, this is what Colombia is. I mean, you, you, you see the big cities and stuff like that. It's friggin' mountains. So you look at the bus here, he'll just he'll overtake everyone and everyone else on the other side of the road will just basically have to slow down. I'm gonna try and take this truck at least, but I can't see anything. I'll just sit behind. Yeah, I'll get the truck. Um So there, that's this this is Colombia, people. This is mountains and mountains and mountains. Gorgeous. Unfortunately, I just came out of Cali. I'm about an hour and a half from Cali, um, and it was pouring with rain. It was pouring with rain the whole time I was there. It, like yesterday, I decided, oh God, it stopped raining. I'll go for a bit of a ride. And by the time I had my helmet on, it was raining again. Another thing you've got to be really, really wary of is is potholes. Now this road's a, this road's one of the nicer roads, but this is like this is not the norm. And so, idiots ride up the ass. I mean, this is about the perfect distance to ride from the car. It's about 50 metres, 45, 50 metres, car in front of you, to give you enough time to see the potholes. And believe me, you, ain't, you don't know potholes until you get to Central and South America. Some of them are a foot deep. Um, I ruined my rear and I've still got a problem with my front rim. Um, I had to re replace my rear rim and my rear tyre and my front uh, uh, front front tyre. I had to replace them anyway, but um, my rear rim was just damaged in about three places and basically had to be replaced. My front rim was only damaged in one place, but I've still got a slow leak even now. 
and uh, it's frustrating. I, I thought I had it fixed in Cartagena, they said they fixed it, but the problem was is they didn't test it enough. Um, and it's le it, it leaks really quickly from the, from the uh, recommended pressure, which is about 34 psi, and it just drops immediately to about 30, 29, and which is not too bad. I mean, I can ride with that. And then it slowly goes to 28, 27, 26, you know, once one psi an hour, maybe. Like I've been riding an hour now, and it's down to 28 psi. Um, so basically, when I have my two-hour stop, I've got to re refill it, which is a pain in the ass. But I'm not staying anywhere long enough to be able to organise anything else. And you need someone who knows what they're doing when you've got uh, tubeless tyres to fix it, fix a rim, and make sure it's sealed correctly. And the guys in Cartagena just weren't up to it. I'll, I'll hopefully get someone in Keto that can look after it. Another thing is road signs. I still don't know what that one means. I think it means speed humps ahead, uh, tapes ahead. But there's different signs for that every, in, in different towns, so I'm not really 100% sure. Um, yeah, so staying up the arse of, uh, of a car or a truck is never a good idea in, uh, in, in Colombia. I mean, this road, you can probably do it a little bit more because it's pretty nice, you know. It looks like it's fairly fresh. Um, but the majority of the roads aren't like this. The majority of the roads are pretty hard and, and, um, and you know, with little potholes, big potholes. So this truck will just move into the lane, it won't, it won't slow down. That's what happens all the time. So that's why you've got to basically sit in this position. Um, and, you've, and you've got to keep your eye out too because everybody overtakes. Like, you'll get, you'll get people with uh, 25, uh, 50, 75, 80, 100, 150cc bikes. So they're, they're all different speeds. Uh, and uh, some of them just gun their bikes. I don't know how, how long their bikes could ever last for, but they just gun it. Ah, oh, you fuck with. If you're gonna go, you're gonna go. Freaking hesitating. Um, yeah, so you've got to, um, you just gotta be always be aware um, it, on, on the roads here. And, and when you come through the town, like you can speed, but you know, like what's the point? Um, I, I just don't see, I mean, in Baja, there's ridiculous speed limits, so you have to speed. I mean, they have speed limits of like 50 kilometres an hour, and you're on a main highway in the middle of nowhere with no cars around, really nice roads going dead straight, and everyone's doing 100, you know. Um, now, as far as police and all that sort of stuff concerned, you're not going to see... I mean, I've, I've had one fine in 20,000 kilometres, and that was in the only country that had radar guns. And that was in um, now I can't, can't, uh, Panama, um, and you know, and, and it was a trap one too. You know, they had roadworks going on, and uh, they reduced the speed limit to 80 kilometres an hour. And I was sitting behind like four trucks for about 15 minutes going up mountain. As soon as I got we got down the downslope, I overtook them, and I was doing 102 overtaking, and I got I got done for it. I mean, what a dick. The only other thing I suggest is you always, if you really want to make sure you don't get any fines, and it's not so much the fines, you'll find that local police are probably the only ones who are more corrupt than anyone else. Uh, you'll find that the state and feds um, and the military, you know, you can't fuck with them. Um, but the, the thing about it is the local police can just cause you troubles, you know. They can delay you. So just try to, I try to stick to the speed limits going through in, in, in any of the towns, you know. Oh, I love this, I just love riding here. Not only that, when you've got a nice road like this, you can have a bit of fun, you know, around the corner. It's just got to get the tyres a little bit warmed up a bit more. People selling, you, you'll find this everywhere. People selling all local produce, fresh fruit, vegetables, they'll be cooking. 
cooking up, you know, uh, Colombians love to love to cook their meat. So yeah, anyway, that's that's just a, a, around about the roads and um, and things to watch out for. Um, you'll find that a lot of roads also just um, just as an aside, you'll find a lot of roads also don't have signs on corners. So look, I, do, I just take it easy. I, you know, I don't want to have an off when I, I'm, I'm riding alone. I don't want to have an off. And, um, and you know, it's just, um, they, so, you know, people just overtake, even if, you, if there's a car coming the other way as well. Um, so, um, you just got to be careful when you get to corners. Have the fun going out of the corners, you know. Respect the corner going into it and have some fun going out. All right, guys. Thank you.